Hello, everybody, and welcome to this special edition of Macro Pro and Friends. I'm Diane Cohen. I'm the Vice President of Client Services and the head of our educational department. Today, I'm joined by Kurt Adamy, one of our regional managers who brought this idea of self-care um, to us. And, and this is a really important program. So hi, Kurt. How are you? And thank you for the great idea. Hey, Diane. I'm doing great. I'm glad to be here. Good. Um, so this is a really important topic, and I'm noticing that it is becoming more mainstream. Have you seen the commercial with Michael Phelps? I did. I saw that last week, which is so great to see some of these mainstream and Olympians be able to talk about uh, mental health and self-care. That's outstanding. I think we all need to realize that none of us are immune to this and it's nothing for us to be ashamed of. It is just a regular natural part of life. And we all just need to reach out and get a little help from time to time. So today we are partnering with the San Diego Paralegal Association. Can you tell me a little bit about the organization and who our, who our uh, guest is today? You bet. You know, when I came from Texas, the first organization that I joined to be a part of was the San Diego Paralegal Association. They're a great group. They always go above and beyond. Uh, their presentations alone, just this last month was a human trafficking conference. Uh, I think Sheila Grella does all of the uh, virtual lunch development and training programs. They had an exploitation on children prevention. So it's just program after program after program that's just outstanding. Uh, June Hunter is our Vice President of Programs and Education for the San Diego Paralegal Association. In fact, just to brag about her a little bit, she's also the Paralegal of the Year in 2019. And for our CAFA audience, she was the CAFA Paralegal of the Year runner-up in 2019. So I'm just thrilled to know her and just so thankful that we've been able to partner with the San Diego Paralegal Association in June. Hey, June, how you doing? I'm good. Um, Kurt, thanks. Um, I'm blushing over here. Um, you just can't see the red yet. Um, but I want to say thank you so much to MacroPro and especially to you, Kurt, for reaching out to us. Um, we have another Paralegal of the Year um, on the uh, on the uh, webinar with us as well. We have Christine Custodio and um, Suero, sorry, Christine Custodio Suero. Um, she is still in my mind a newlywed. She was the 2020 Paralegal of the Year for Kappa and also the 2020 Paralegal of the Year for SIDPA. Um, and so we are so lucky to have her. She's also the NALA director um, for SIDPA as well. So she's on our board of directors and she has a laundry list of accomplishments that are about 10 miles longer than mine. So um, I won't spend a lot of time going over that, but I do want to welcome all of our SIDPA guests um, today. I noticed some CAPA guests as well. And I also wanted to just remind everyone to please take a look at SIDPA's website, the events. We have a lot of great things um, coming up. Every Friday, we have the virtual lunch with leaders. We have another one coming up this Friday, Cruise Control Learning Professional Development um, with Lucia Da Vinci and Shereen Clark. Um, and so, <clears throat> just take a look there and register for some of our upcoming um, webinars that we have. We're also planning our Bridging of the Gap conference for March. Um, again, I want to say thank you, Kurt. Thank you, Diane, from MacroPro. And also thank you um, to our presenter today. I really appreciate y'all putting in so much time and effort to bring this um, you know, to fruition for our um, members. So thank you. You're welcome. So Kurt, speaking of our speaker, can you tell us a little bit about Dr. Tall? I'd be glad to. Dr. Deborah Tull is a doctorate in clinical psychology. She's been recognized with numerous state and local awards. Dr. Deb has had a 38 year history with the Los Angeles Community College District, serving in numerous roles, including counselor, instructor, administrator. Dr. Deb has served as an instructor for the University of Southern California's Safe Community Institute for the past three years and has served as a lead researcher on two National Council on Disability projects, which are nationwide in scope. This project's data is being used to inform the President of the United States and Congress of key facts and findings. Dr. Deb is a member of the Los Angeles Superior Mental Health Think Tank, and currently Dr. Deb offers as a, serves as the Executive Director of Vention Works, which offers communities and businesses mental health prevention and training programs. It's my honor to introduce Dr. Deb Tull. 
Doctor, before you get started, I would like to say one thing to our audience. If you have any questions, there is a chat box that is part of the GoToWebinar uh, uh, control panel. So please put your questions in there. Kurt and I will be monitoring them. And if we get an opportunity, we will be happy to answer them. So Dr. Tall, thank you again so much for being part of today's program. And what I would like to say is thank you. Um, I love what I do and I love reaching out. And um, when I was given the opportunity to share time with you, I jumped at it. And I wanna thank the Paralegal Association and MacroPro for uh, reaching out uh, to me to come to you. And um, I also wanted to make mention of the fact that I read your newsletter and uh, I'm not sure if it's the most current one, but I was thinking that it was. You guys have such heart, you know, the profiles of all of your, you know, professional members was spot on, the help that you do for your community, all of that, it's, it's just absolutely wonderful. So today what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about mental health. And I have um, many things that I could say about mental health as a psychologist, but one of the things that I wanna make mention of is that um, there's a lot of stigma surrounding mental health. And what we do, what we need to do is bust the stigma because we all have mental health concerns and we all have physical health concerns. And there are laws in this country about parity and they, the treatment for both um, uh, disorders should be on par. And uh, that isn't, you know, always the norm. So um, it's very uh, important that uh, our political leaders buy in to providing more um, mental health treatment facilities. And I don't know if you guys are aware of it or not, but several years ago, uh, the Prop 63 was passed. And that's a 1% tax on millionaires. And supposedly what's supposed to happen is that that fund is supposed to roll into mental health services in the community. And so I think we all need to know that that money is there, know where it came from and do what we can to advocate for uh, improved mental health. Okay. All right, so we've um, been through uh, a pandemic and 20 million disasters, California fires and, and all this and that. And so literally the rug has been pulled out from under us. And what we need to do is really figure out how to take care of ourselves. I believe that we have a lot of healing power um, within ourselves and we can embrace ourselves uh, to bring better states of health. So in this presentation, what I want to do is talk about building a self-care plan. And um, so let's, let's take a peek at, at what I have for you, okay? All right, so let me bring this down, okay. So um, as an overview, we'll talk a little bit about the pandemic, but we really don't need to talk too much about it because we've all been, um, you know, basically knocked around by the pandemic. It's affected every aspect of our lives. And there are a lot of impacts on mental health. And the paralegal profession, I was really absolutely delighted when I was, I'm always these days looking at how bad is it? And I wanted to know how bad is it in the paralegal profession as it relates to unemployment and such. And you guys have fared pretty well you know, it's, uh, I came up with stats like 1.9, 2.6, um, and it's looking like you might have a bright future as, as you go. So um, hopefully that is the case. Okay, we're gonna talk about mental health coping strategies. Again, the development of a self-care plan. Uh, we can't always, you know, expect that somebody's gonna be out there to always help us. So we need to take care of ourselves and our families. Stress management strategies, ways to unwind. unwind. Relaxation is a biggie. Uh, it's uh, controlling anxiety, basically. Emotional eating, boy, people have done a lot of that, you know, through the pandemic. I, I think that um, if everybody stepped on the scale, they might find that they're a little bit heavier than they were uh, before the pandemic. Importance of exercise, conducting self-checks, 
warning signs of mental illness and resources. So we're going to uh, do a hop, skip and a jump. And I know that we don't have that much time, but hopefully I'll be able to cover everything. And Diane was mentioning that there's a chat um, feature. So if you have questions, uh, please enter your question. Um, I have my email address at the end of the presentation and I would love to hear from you. Um, I do this and I, I conduct my practice because it's my passion. And um, I guess I'm a healer with a conscience. So please feel free to um, uh, communicate with me. Okay, so how do I teach? Okay, what, what are I expose my learners to? All right, um, pathways to learning, tips and tools. I always leave um, uh, learners that go through my presentations with uh, material that they can take and turn around and utilize in their own lives uh, because it doesn't do any good just to hear something and then not be able to uh, take it on the road. And so the first thing I have down here is change agent. And um, what I would like is for everybody that's listening to become their own change agent, all right? Because we can't anymore, I think, depend on just pointing our finger and asking somebody else to do something. We need to take responsibility. And when we walk around our world, when we you know, looking at our legal cases, as we're with our families, you know, whatever we're doing, I'm sure that you will be able to spot some things that you need to stop. And um, I'm asking you if you could just take responsibility and help do that. Some things that if you're stopping one thing, you might wanna start something else and things that you wanna leave alone. And uh, I think the world would be a better place if we all did that. So I am uh, uh, right now deputizing you as change agent. So don't forget, okay? <laughs> all right, my teaching methods uh, use PowerPoint and video clips. I work with individuals with disabilities and um, they uh, really benefit more if I have uh, visual, auditory, a lot of different uh, learning modalities present in my teaching. So hopefully that works for you. And then the last thing is audience participation. I really, really, um, uh, would appreciate it if you would participate fully. This presentation is from me to you, but collectively we all own it. And it will be made richer if we hear from you and not just me. So um, so see what you can do, okay. And you know, you might wanna take it back to the workplace, you know, too, um, and um, talk about it and share. All right, next, okay. Um, so the pandemic has basically pulled the rug out from under the entire, uh, I was going to say nation, not nation, uh, the entire world. And, um, you know, we're just now trying to uh, pull it together and get COVID vaccines out there, people healthier. People are just now, I think, getting with the program of wearing a mask. And I know that I have mine right here. <laughs> and um, every time I go out of my office, out into my community, I have it on. Um, but it has created, um, you know, enormous stress and a big stir in our world. So we, we have to do what we can to uh, make it better. Okay, so it has significantly hit the pandemic. Um, the economy and um, work areas. And we know this, all right? I'm sure that many of you have felt that. And um, so there's uh, a few stats here for you and then some more stats. And uh, approximately 80% say that the virus uh, is a significant source of stress in their life. And that's because it's affected almost every corner of our life. And um, so we all need to come together and do what we can to, to help solve the crisis. Okay, so economic and work-related um, upheavals, right? The pandemic has caused the biggest blow to the US economy since the Great Depression. I'm sure you all know that. Um, I know that you're probably hearing um, you know, all the conversation about stimulus checks and when will the next ones be out and, and all of that. That hasn't happened in years and years and years. The GDP fell at almost 33% annualized rate. 
and it's the deepest decline since the records began in 47. And 30.2 million Americans were receiving unemployment checks the week ending July 11, 2020. All right, so work-related problems, unemployment, furloughs, working remotely, varied work hours. And um, what I can say is that if you are uh, someone in the audience that happens to be unemployed or furloughed, um, one way you could deal with it is um, to think about perhaps shopping for a new career, um, going for some more education, um, I'm a product of the community colleges, I've done a lot of program development, curriculum design, all of that. They have wonderful career centers and do a lot of testing at cost-effective prices and uh, have a lot of classes that you could take at, at almost no cost. So keep in mind, um, when you're waiting, you don't have to be uh, stagnant. You could be very productive. Okay, uh, life-related problems. Many people are facing eviction. Hopefully they're gonna have a moratorium on that that will last longer than it has. Homelessness, living in unsafe areas, food insecurity, poor nutrition, sleeplessness. Let's talk about sleeplessness for a minute. I'm someone that is not a really good sleeper. So that's where it hits me. I'm sure we all could pick something on that list. And uh, if you're someone who has varied work hours, maybe working remotely, the changing of your work schedule from early to late, um, you know, and vice versa, uh, can really do a lot to erode your ability to sleep. So that's something you really need to pay attention to. And there are some actual techniques that can help you and uh, get you to sleeping better. Physical and mental health issues are uh, running rampant, loss of health insurance. So what if you have health problems and no insurance? That's a real problem. Um, and I mentioned the colleges a minute ago. You could take a class, let's say, on a community college campus, and they have a health center. And um, so you could go there and um, receive uh, physical health care, not extensive, but at least something, and mental health care transportation issues. A lot of people lost their vehicles, which is very, very difficult. And domestic violence is definitely on the increase. One thing that is not down here is uh, suicide. And there's been a drastic increase of, of suicides at this point in time. And so we all need to do what we can to work on suicide prevention and paying particular attention to our young ones. And um, and uh, foster kids, if any of you have any contact with foster kids. Okay, so the pandemic is basically highlighting our need to uh, design self-care plans and build support around ourselves so that we can have good mental health and physical health. So you might be thinking, well, I am a little bit busy. Don't think that, <laughs> okay? Because, I mean, I'm always saying that when it's time to go on the treadmill. You know, I'll do it later, you know. Um, what you need to do is seize the opportunity because um, one thing that will breed illness is putting off attention to your healthcare needs. And um, so you need to just grab hold of it and um, do what you can in the present. So when this crazy pandemic is over and our economy returns, you'll be returning to it in a healthy fashion. Okay, so mental health, all right. Remember at the beginning I was talking about Prop 63 and there's all this money from um, millionaires and billionaires. Okay, so still what is happening is there's this huge um, statistic that is out there um, saying that people are really struggling with uh, many mental health conditions, but in particular anxiety and, and depressive disorder. But yet almost 23% reported needing but not receiving any help. So those are the kinds of things that we need to do something about. Um, remember at the beginning, I was also yammering about uh, being a change agent, you know, um, 
you know, talk to your council people in your areas and see if you can bring some relief, you know, yourselves by, by advocating. All right, so what does the crisis say? Uh, the latest stats are that uh, almost 40% of adults in the United States reported symptoms of anxiety or depressive disorder um, this past year. And uh, that's a really fairly large number. And if we were trying to measure college students or university students, that number would be higher. And I always, uh, in the work that I do, I always try and take a global approach. And so what I have found that um, is that uh, we need to pay attention to our own backyard because look at the statistics uh, in California. And California is the state that has the Prop 63. So we need to think about that for a minute and do what we can to advocate. Okay, more stats, you know, that we need to pay attention to. Uh, this is from CDC. Okay, so your future from the research that I was able um, to do for today's presentation seems really pretty bright. Seems that uh, paralegal professionals and secretaries, legal secretaries, are projected to have the biggest employment gains when we get over this crisis. And, um, and it, pro it projects that lawyer uh, employment growth will grow by 4% <coughs> and your growth will grow by 5%, which is pretty wonderful. Okay, so um, mental health coping strategies. Okay, so find your focus. Um, we all know what it feels like to go out the door in the morning and we're, we're foggy, you know, and we just can't seem to get a grip. Um, avoid the news spiral, stay in the present, reach out for help, find and utilize re resources. Those are all the basic strategies that I can share. And I want to draw attention to one of the strategies the stay in the present, it really relates well with um, producing a good work product, staying healthier on the job, staying um, in, in tune with your family. Um, I've taught for many, many years, and when I would have a classroom full of university students, I would take role, and I would tell the students to say that they were here, if they were here, so they get credit. And then I would ask them if they were present. And at first, there, were a lot of there was a lot of laughter. Oh, she's just an absent-minded professor. But there's a difference between being physically, um, you know, at a work site or school and being fully present, because that's where you can do the most good. Okay, coping strategies. Okay, at the beginning, I was talking about um, crafting a simple self-care plan. And so you are in the audience today um, and you are going to be taking a look at the different dimensions of what that self-care plan can be, but you could take it home to your family, share it with neighbors um, so that we can transform our communities into um, greater states of wellness. So there are five basic uh, components. There's the emotional stage, social, spiritual, physical, and cognitive. Now, I promised you videos, okay? So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna watch um, a video from YouTube, and this is part of the tools that I mentioned at the beginning. Um, I draw on YouTube all the time because there's, there's a lot of uh, people that produce great material that really might be tackling some of the issues that you need to be tackling. So it's really good to, to go and take a peek at that uh, when you can. Okay, so let's take a peek. And I want you to play like you're a university student when you're watching this because it was basically crafted for university students. Okay, let's give it a look. Push, push, play. Tests. Okay. <laughs> Twitter. Social is also overwhelming and stressful. But who has time to relieve stress when it's 
constantly building and building. Well, we hope you do because studies have shown that too much stress leads to headaches, higher blood pressure, and upset stomach, memory loss, disrupted sleep, and increased risk for heart attacks. Stress does a number on your mind and body, draining your immune system and messing with your ability to concentrate. Having tense, sore muscles, shallow breath, increased heart rate, these are all, all signs that you might be too stressed out. Hey, we all know that you can't take fewer classes. You can't quit the track team or resign from student government. We get it. But here are a few tips that will help you feel calmer inside when your outside life gets too hectic. One, stay in and recuperate. When stressed, you might feel the need to tackle everything on your to-do list all at once, but that sets you up for burnout and failure. Instead, find a simple routine task to complete at home, like doing the dishes or vacuuming. Studies show that completing a repetitive task allows your brain to pare down and focus. The perfect cure for a worried, scattered mind. After you finish cleaning your house, clean yourself. Yes, we wrote that, clean yourself, a warm bath or hot shower will boost your mood. Studies have shown that the sensation of warm water triggers responses in the body and brain similar to those triggered by emotional warmth. So think of your next shower like a soothing liquid hug. If you find stress keeping you up all night, try progressive muscle relaxation just before bed. That is a fancy way to describe clenching up every muscle in your body for a few seconds and then letting go. Lie on your back and start with your forehead, continuing through your tummy, down through your thighs, and finally your little toes. Repeat as needed until every muscle is completely relaxed. Then sleep like a baby. Two, get out for good vibes. Oh. Down your doggy paddle your way through stress. The spiritual mantras used in yoga and meditation help focus the mind and stave off feelings of anxiety. Yoga not for you? That's okay. Go outside for a good dose of natural light and a little jog. Exercise lessens anxiety and helps maintain feelings of calm even in the face of distressing events. Hey, leave the headphones behind. All the distracting chatter from those texts and emails and tweets can wait. And hey, instead of texting, emailing, or tweeting your best friend, why don't you guys just meet up and get in a good laugh? Because laughter injects a surge of endorphins into the body, which creates feelings of happiness and euphoria, which is why you like them so much. Three, here's the best one. Treat yourself to something yummy. Mmm, chocolate. All right, look, we're not condoning emotional eating because that's a whole other thing. But there are treats that you can keep handy that will improve your mood, like dark chocolate. Certain chemicals in chocolate help relax the blood vessels, which reduces blood pressure. Ah, you can also appeal to your sense of smell for relaxation. The aromas of spearmint and lavender have proven de-stressing effects. So go buy a lavender scented candle or pick up some spearmint tea. Take a moment to yourself and breathe in the goodness. There you have it, Wellcasters, our quick tips for stress relief. You're gonna have to anticipate that life will be filled with ups and downs. So when the challenges do come, you can take comfort now in knowing that there's a warm shower just on the other side of your bathroom or a delicious piece of chocolate stashed in your be sure to incorporate stress relief strategies into your daily routine. Make them as essential as breathing. In through your nose, and out through your mouth. Okay, I hope you all enjoyed that. Actually, if we were in a classroom together and we were eyeball to eyeball, and heart to heart, we can be talking about that. But there are a lot of tips there that really work. So I'm hoping that you'll be able to take advantage of that. Okay, so benefits of self-care. All right, self-care is an important tool to help achieve wellness and uh, really does help to uh, balance our bodies 
and um, helps us regain physical, spiritual, mental, and emotional balance. Okay, so let's take a look at the first component of a, a good self-care plan. All right, start journaling to keep track of your moods and behaviors. And I don't know if any of you have done journaling before. It's actually really a good exercise. Um, one of the things that I have used it for myself is that I'll do journaling, let's say during one specific year or season or whatever, and then I'll look at it the following year. And uh, it really does a good, it's a good way to measure where you were and uh, where you're going. Okay, form an emotional support group. Be aware of yourself when you seem to be shutting down. You know, when you feel like you want to isolate yourself, when you feel that you want to withdraw, I think it's time to really take a look and um, ask yourself what is going on. When it says form an emotional support group, I'm actually on the advisory committee for LA County Mental Health. And so there are a lot of, a lot of clients that um, uh, go to the meetings at County Mental Health. And so at our last meeting, we were talking about starting Zoom support groups and that it wouldn't necessarily be run by a therapist, but all the people that were working together to recover from some emotional challenge could um, emotionally support each other. And I think that's going to be a go. And, um, you know, it's really interesting because when people that have gone through something and they've done healing on a particular challenge, um, they really are a good resource to help others. Uh, figure out what they should be doing to um, uh, become healthier. Okay, social. That's another aspect. Be sure and reach out to your friends. Stay in contact with your family members who may be lonely. Video chat with coworkers or neighbors. And that thing of uh, reaching out to friends and neighbors and all of that, you know, when you're going for a walk, you know, I mean, we all need to be you know, COVID sensitive, wear a mask and, you know, keep our distance. But it's really good to uh, be able to uh, embrace those around us because many people are isolated. Many people are struggling. Spiritual, read self-help and or uh, motivational articles, spend time helping others, listen to music, practice meditation, save some time for creative pursuits. Now, when I say practice, meditation, it doesn't necessarily mean a religious practice, although it can. Um, it just means a practice where maybe you're paying a little bit more attention to your breath and um, you're able to come together with yourself and be calm. And um, you do that on a routine schedule. And then it says, listen to music. I want to, you know, let you know about this um, website, this company called Sounds True. And I don't know if any of you out there have ever used that website or that business before, but they have incredible product, you know, which will teach you about relaxation and meditation and um, self-esteem building and all different kinds of things, working on specific mental health challenges, all of that. So again, sounds true. Go check it out and um, see if there isn't something there for you. Okay, relaxation. We all need to relax more. I mean, in your industry, um, it is very, very difficult to stay relaxed. There's tons of tension at work. You know, you have all of the lawyers that you're dealing with, you know, lots, you know, of probably work to take home, you know, and you have to figure out a way to wrap your arms around yourself and deal with the anxiety. And so this little cartoon uh, slide sort of shows you some possible ways of dealing with it and uh, including practicing gratitude. Um, there it has meditation, um, cup of tea, all that good stuff. So um, what you want to do is uh, perhaps start uh, looking at some of those and have that be part of your journey to wellness. All right, physical exercise, okay. Um, so we're all busy and it's all, all of us are saying, well, I'll catch my, my walk tomorrow or I'll catch my run the next day or whatever. Um, but again, stay in the moment 
and do what you can on any given day. Uh, so physically, make sure you're getting enough sleep. Might be go to bed early enough. Um, sometimes I'm guilty of I'll get started on a project and I don't go to bed early enough. And then, of course, when I go to bed, well, then I think to myself, I have to hurry and fall asleep because I have to get up early. And then, of course, there's anxiety caused from that. So it could just be a, you know, a real anxiety loop if you don't treat it the right way. But exercise will uh, help you manage anxiety and relax so you can sleep and eat nutritious food. All right, emotional eating. It's gardening season. Five weeks ago, I planted myself on the sofa and I've grown considerably. All right, and I wish I could see a show of hands because is there anybody out there that hasn't gained weight? I should ask the question that way. Um, it's really, if you're concerned about stuff, you're not going out, maybe you're self-isolating, it's real easy you know, to do some emotional eating. So uh, all of us need to sort of um, hold that in check. I actually joined Weight Watchers and asked me if I've gone to any meeting or if I've done their program. No, and I need to do that. So. That brings me back to, you know, I have to do my own medicine, you know, that I need to take advantage of the time that I have and uh, not just push it off to the future. Okay, so why is exercise so great um, uh, for anxiety management? So let's take a peek and see what this video says. Exercise is a natural antidepressant and is proven to be very helpful in dealing with any sort of anxiety issues. In this video, we are going to clarify how physical activity has such a great impact on your mental well-being and what sort of exercise you should be doing to get a maximum positive effect for coping with your anxiety. Also, how should you start? What is the best way to motivate you to get started even though you might have developed anxiety around exercise itself? Everyone knows that it is a fact that people who are physically active live longer and are less prone to illnesses. Heart attack, stroke, inflammatory disease are all less common in people that are active than their lazier counterparts. So just for the physical health benefits alone, it should be worth doing regular exercise. Regular exercise has a great positive impact on your mental well-being, which is shown by plenty of studies that clearly present that being active makes you happy and content. How does physical activity help with anxiety? First, exercising helps your body to send out neurotransmitters such as serotonin, dopamine, and adrenaline, which all contribute to your well-being and happiness. Second, in room sports, a proven to lower the activity in the prefrontal cortex is the part where emotional stimuli are transformed into actual conscious feelings. Number three, the very periodical nature of many sports such as jogging, cycling, and swimming are known to have a very calming effect. As an anxious person, your muscles tighten which can cause a lot of physical symptoms such as tightness, tingling, or headache. Being physically active relieves this tension in your muscles, but makes them stronger, so you will less inclined for tension in the future. Now, let's move on to what kind of sports you should be doing. First of all, any kind of exercise is beneficial to your health, but cardio workouts, such as swimming, jogging, and cycling, seem to be the most effective to quiet your mind, especially if you get to do them outdoors in the fresh air and under the sun. Ultimately, the choice should be made on what you enjoy most. If you have fun with what you're doing, it is so much easier to make exercise a habit and introduce it into your life routine. And what should you do if you are the type that can't be asked to get up and work out? Well, you now know the benefits it can have on your mental health, so why don't you give it a go for just a few weeks? I can promise that after just a few weeks, you will feel the great impact it has on your well-being and life altogether. So to get there, you have some initial willpower. And these simple tips can help at the beginning. First, find an activity that you don't hate and hopefully enjoy. Don't do it just for the health benefits. Once you have found something you can imagine doing, just slowly and easily, don't go ahead and start running 10 kilometers every day. 
you'll be burned out and be motivated in no time. Then always plan a schedule. Ideally, you should dedicate at least 30 minutes on three days of the week for your workout. But the most important part is the first few weeks. At the beginning, you will need real power to get up and get moving. But after a while, it will be part of your routine. You will pray for the next time you get to work out, especially after you see some of the physical change that come along with it, such as losing weight, a more toned body, or just simple bad physical condition. Hope you enjoyed the video, and if you want to watch more anxiety and self-improvement content just like this one, please subscribe. Okay, um, I hope you enjoyed that. And you know, one thing that you could do, and I actually think that MacroPro has done this before, is you could have a contest on, um, remember the show, The Biggest Loser? And you could have your own internal, you know, diet and exercise contest and um, see if that doesn't inspire people to um, uh, get with some kind of uh, physical activity program. Okay, so what about cognitively? All right, um, we have to do things to be mentally alert. Again, we have to focus on uh, what you can control, assume positive intent, start your day with an affirmation. You know, there are those books that have different affirmations, which you could uh, go and look at. Um, I think it's important to always look toward the light. That's why I have that little picture you know, that's up there instead of, um, Here, you, you got to come lay down. Pardon me. Okay. I think, that, <laughs> I think that you, we, we need to keep check on, uh, critical thinking in our minds. And now uh, that's this little picture there. The hardest prison to escape is in our own mind. And, uh, that is so true. I don't know if you're one, if you have sleeping issues, that you let the negative thoughts, the negative chatter just whirl around in, in your head. Um, but it, that's something you really need to work on. And there are a lot of, um, you know, therapists and a lot of exercises that you can do that can help with that. All right, conduct self checks. It doesn't uh, really do much good to have a um, self care plan and then you don't check and see if, um, it's doing what you want it to do. So it's always good to keep check on how you're doing. So take a look at your focusing. Take a look and see if anxiety is um, turning your feelings uh, into um, rage or being out of control. Um, do you have strong feelings that interfere with daily activities? like being at work and then deciding you need to go home <laughs> before it's time to go home. Uh, emotions that become unmanageable. Uh, I'm sure many of us have, have felt that. Feelings of hopelessness or helplessness. All right, so that last one, let's hover on that for just one second. Again, suicide rates are off the charts. And generally people that are feeling hopeless or helpless are the ones that might be a little bit more apt to do something to take their life or to um, be a cutter or somebody that harms themselves in some physical way. And I th think that as coworkers, we can always keep watch, you know, and I'm saying for you to do self check for yourselves, but then also take a look at the people around you and see if you can get some help there. Warning signs of mental illness. Okay. Um, so I've structured this PowerPoint primarily for uh, we've been victimized by the pandemic, okay? But there are some individuals that actually will wind up having a mental health condition that needs treatment. And so I wanted to put um, down a list of some of the things that you might be uh, looking for, okay? And I want to also mention that Many mental health healers these days uh, practice their healing in what I call the recovery model. So it isn't like if you have a mental health condition and it hits at some point that you'll have that forever. You know, if you get treatment and do what's needed and keep doing your uh, self checks and planning, you should be able to work your way free. 
with the exception of there are some uh, uh, mental health disorders that have a genetic link. And so for those individuals, it's possible that uh, the mental health issue might last a little bit longer. But I can tell you that there's so many incredible medications now and so many incredible treatments that um, with the recovery model, what you do is you recover, you know, from whatever you're challenged with so that you can fully participate in a productive life. Okay, so some of the warning signs, and I'll just let you sort of uh, go over them. Sleep or appetite changes is, is a biggie. Okay, I uh, sort of like danced around that a couple of times. Um, mood changes, and you could see it in yourselves, you know, if um, you feel that your mood is changing or if somebody starts giving you some critique um, about your mood. Withdrawal. A lot of people that might be having a mental health breakdown or, you know, um, challenge might feel that they want to withdraw from any so social interaction, drop in functioning. You should be able to notice at work, um, you know, or with family, you know, if, if something's going on. Problems uh, thinking, like if you really can't focus, can't concentrate, all right, increased sensitivity, heightened sensitivity to um, sights, sounds, smells, or touch, avoidance of overstimulating situations. That might be, that again, that tendency to want to withdraw and to isolate. Apathy, you know, that sort of goes along with, uh, you know, people that are maybe going into depression and you just lose your ambition or initiative, you know, to go in and do anything. You know, you'd rather take a nap. Or something like that. Feeling disconnected is another one. Illogical thinking. Nervousness. Um, you know, I've actually worked with some individuals that, you know, come to me and they're really super nervous. And um, at the beginning, they think it's normal to be nervous. And they didn't know that there was a way to live life that didn't contain that nervousness. And so it was eye-opening that there was actually a way out or a door they could walk through um, that would allow them to control the anxiety, the nervousness. And again, there are just incredible medications, you know, that are available now that can really help with that. Unusual behavior, odd, uncharacteristic, and peculiar behavior. And again, with all of these warning signs, we should be, uh, you know, uh, you know, um, watch to see if we embody any of that, but then also our family, our communities, our coworkers. And I'll say a little bit more about that as we get to the end of the program, but um, important to pay attention. Okay, so if we're doing self checks to see if our, you know, our self plan is doing what it should be, that's wonderful. But sometimes what we need to do is look beyond ourselves and see if we have a negative work, school, or community climate. And a lot of discord is happening now. And, and that would include at home, work, or school. I was listening to this um, podcast the other day and it was talking about a problem that a family was having and it was because there were like four in the family. And so mother, father, two kids, and um, all of them agreed to wear their mask except one. And then the family didn't know what to do because then should they put that one in a separate room? You know, I mean, how, how would they handle meal time? I mean, so all of these situations that sort of hover over a COVID response are alive and well. And so we sort of need to figure out what we should do with them. Parenting issues, all right? Kids are suffering too, and we need to really pay attention to that. And um, I'm someone that really tries to take a stand against bullying and, you know, look around at the world around us. There is too much agitation. I'm sorry. So even the adults are bullying each other.
but we would need to do something with the bullying with our kids because kids can um, really be hurt deeply and, um, and even take a look at cyber bullying. Domestic violence is another thing that we need to take a look at and really um, be, seriously look at it because, um, because of all of the irritation and political differences and COVID and lack of money and all of that, it, it stirs up tension in a family. And sometimes that tension might raise to the level of um, violence. So, all right, so resources. Um, so I'm giving you some resources for the LA area, San Diego area, and then uh, San Francisco area. But um, you're in these areas, so you might even know more, you know? Maybe your organization would like to put together a directory of the best services that you have in, in your particular area. I sort of like the friendship line that I have listed here, because if you're 60 years or older, or an adult living with a disability, there's a line for those people. And so you could turn them onto that resource. All right. Uh, California Aging and Adult Information Line. You know, if you have neighbors, perhaps it could benefit. You could help them. LA County Domestic Violence Services. There's a line for that. And there are also a lot of, um, you know, um, shelters in the in the community so if you were to call that number you could get hold of some of those shelters headspace is just a good resource if you're the anxious type and you're feeling overwhelmed there's a number national suicide prevention hotline um you know you need to check that out and that's for all areas that's an 800 number so here's la county mental health number here are San Diego resources, so I want you to feel free to call that number and reach out. San Francisco resources, I'm giving you, you know, um, a number of, of resources there, so feel free to reach out for help. You know, a lot of things with this self-care plan we can sort of, um, you know, take care of, you know, if we just embrace ourselves, but there will be things that um, you'll need help with. So you need to take a look at the resources and see if you could benefit. Help for stress management. Okay, so I'm giving you some product. All right, there are two apps and a PDF there. So uh, feel free. And then I have one more video. And so I was going through a little anxiety as to whether I should show this or not, because uh, no presenter wants their uh, attendees to fall asleep um at the end of their presentation it's just not a feel-good situation so uh, this is all about falling asleep for elmo so maybe i'll play a couple of minutes of it and then i will um shut it down and the reason i'm putting it here is one is just darling and but it's sort of like we have kids and if your kids are going through something you need to meet them where they are and there's again it's another instance of YouTube being invaluable. And uh, hi, Debbie, thank you so much for uh, the presentation. Were you able to give out your email information? So I see her email information up on the screen right now. Um, it looks like it's um, drdebtull at gmail.com for um, everyone that is on the, um, the webinar. Um, and it is on that first page. And um, you can all go into the handouts and download those handouts. And I saw earlier in the chat box um, that you posted, Diane, that um, a copy of the presentation is going to be um, uploaded to Macro's YouTube page by Friday afternoon. And I know that it will be our plan to um, at least have a link to that YouTube video from SIDPA's website over to that um, in case anyone forgets where to go to get that. Well, I'm sorry about the glitch here at the end, but we'd like to thank all of you for attending today. I'd like to thank Dr. Tall and also um, the San Diego Paralegal Association for uh, partnering with us for this very important event. For Kurt, myself, Diane, Dr. Tall, and MacroPro, I'd like to say thank you for joining us. Bye-bye now.